All right, YouTubers, so let's build this propeller. Not sure if it's gonna be two blades or three blades. Uh, we'll see. Uh, new, uh, remember this, uh, this place for our RC, this propeller, so uh, it's probably between 10 to 12 inches in diameter. So a new part here. And uh, let me work on millimeters and let me work as well with a white background that would looks better so let me start uh, creating uh, here uh, the hop for the hop I will say uh, let's work from the front plane and uh, let's see top plane actually top plane is a lot better top plane let's construct there and uh, let's start with a circle here and that circle should have about um, Let's settle for 14 millimeters. So that will do. And uh, so now let's extrude that. Fissure, extrude. And it's going in the y direction. That looks good. So we're going to extrude 10 millimeters. That's the, uh, the default here. So that's acceptable. We're going to accept that. And we're done basically here with the hub right at the center now uh, what's next let's start to you know construct the connection of this hub uh, to the motor to the electrical motor all right so let's use here let's work on the bottom here and uh, so let's do a cut and uh, let's put that uh, in front of me and uh, let's see, that will be a circle as well. And that circle is very important because there's gonna be a bushing inside there. And for that bushing, uh, last time I have some a little bit trouble accommodating the bushing. So originally, let's see, I had this size. I had about 9.50 millimeters. So what I'm gonna do is add a percentage to that number so we're gonna add like 0 0.02 times the 9.50 so that's about two percent on the diameter so that end up being about 9.69 9.69 uh from the original value of 9.50 so let's see if that two percent will allow me to fit the bushing properly there all right so with that said let's do now let's go to feature and let's do the cut for the accommodation of the bushing and that uh, is about uh, 3.1 uh, again um, I might have to add a little bit let's go with the two percent as well plus the two percent point oh two time 3.1 and that will end up about 3.162 uh, to accommodate the bushing inside so we are going to accept that and there's the cut to fit the bushing now to fit uh, the motor and uh, the axle of the motor we're going to still work on, on this side and for that let's create a sketch right there let's put that in right here and uh, for that um, I will say the circle should be I think that that fit okay I'm gonna do that one at uh, 6.3 6.3 and let's go back again to features and finish the cut and the cut will be up to through all yep accept that and here is the uh, the hub for the uh, to fit that within the motor all right now let's start building the blades here so for the blades um, let's see, where's the right plane? Right plane, right there. Let's build 
um, let's build a reference plane and let's say that that plane will be about uh, uh, 15 millimeters sounds good to me 15 millimeters there we go accept that and we're done all right so within that plane let's construct let's build a sketch there again um, and uh, let's put uh, a reference line it's gonna be a center line right there there we go and now uh, from the center let's also construct something here and now let's build another line another construction line there we go and now uh, let's give some dimension to that angle that's gonna be 45 degrees And now let's put an ellipse over that and let's see how this goes. So let's build an ellipse right from the center and uh, there we go. And now let's keep, uh, let's start to mess with this. Let's get the center this, of this ellipse right. So fix it there fix it there and now uh, what I'm gonna do that's distance should be if I remember that right that distance should be 12 millimeters so let's see how that looks like check this you see no it has to be like that the night that's gonna be um, approximately 12 millimeters and now how the thickness for the thickness of this ellipse um that point and that point you see how you be very careful how you pick if you move like that that would not do it has to be right there uh, and that distance is about three millimeters of thickness and now let's start to rotate our frame here so Let's get out of here so that this line is coincident with that line there we go right there I can make it a little bit longer perhaps the 12 I can increase it to 13 because as long as it fits within the hub I don't see a problem although there it looks good enough for me so I can still stick with the 12 and add the root uh, in fact I can make it a little bit thicker because the root requires you know has to be strong to hold uh, uh, the force the thrust of the propeller so let's make the root a little bit stronger oops I'm gonna make that uh, that four millimeters and that will do now uh, that looks good so we're gonna accept that and it's well defined as you can see fully defined everything is the way it should be I think that we are good they are perfect here we accept that now um, there's two things that I can certainly do now well actually let's do one first which is extrude this guy to touch the hub so let's extrude and uh, now what we have here through all no that would be up to surface now what's the surface that surface and that look good now the question is should I merge or not um, I can make it like another body sometimes it's a little bit tricky so if I merge I gotta merge let's uh, I'm, in fact I don't I'm not sure what's gonna happen if I merge because it's, this will be copy uh, to make the other propeller so whatever I do here will be similarly done on the other side so let's start by not merging 
are not going to merge. So we're going to have two bodies at this point, and that's good enough for me. So we're going to accept that, and I have two bodies right there. See, one body, two bodies. Now, here's the story. I want from the center here uh, at half of the distance, I might drop a little bit the 45 to uh, 30 degrees, and then the other half end up in about 15 degrees from the from the from this one that is 45 degrees. So in other words, I gonna try. I gonna try. The root is at the highest uh, angle of attack, which is 45 degrees. But as I go along, I reduce it a little bit, like about let's say reference again. Uh, in this case, uh, what's gonna be the reference? Actually, let's get uh, into that would be right now. The reference there reference plane and here's the story uh, let's make that plane about half of the distance so that will be let's say if I'm gonna build a propeller which is six inches uh, at each side approximately for a 12 inches uh, propeller then I will say at six inches and let's get this going that would be six time time um, let's see that would be at uh, actually three inches time 2.54 time 10 that would be uh, the first three inches up to here and then the rest of the three inches will have another angle so in terms of angle this hop here has the highest uh, root at 45 degrees and then I'm thinking that uh, the from here to here when I connect uh, that angle will drop to 30 so let's do that at the basically three inches so we're gonna construct that plane at three inches from the center so we accept this and that's what we have three inches now Remember, the lax is to construct another plane which is going to be at full six inches because it's going to be six inches down here and six inches down here for the 12. Uh, this plane, then, on plane two, I have to do uh, construct again a sketch here on plane two and let's get that plane uh, the way I can see what's going on. There we go. Now, on this plane, this is the story. We, we start again doing a center line. And that, uh, let's construct two lines for as a reference for my angle of attack. That's one. This, this a lot. I mean, there's other way to do this angle of attack easier, but uh, I like this one a lot better. There we go. Now, let's make this angle of attack. Let's start to reduce it to almost 30. And that will do. And now, bring the another ellipse. And let's build that ellipse right here. And now, uh, there we go. That's a lot better. There we go. That's where I want it. Again, let's build. I like to put this connecting line from this guy down to this guy. And what we're going to do is that, depending on the size of that one, that can be a lot, you know, larger uh, than the first one. So let's say that we go here for. Uh, gonna go for the first one was close to 12 so I'm gonna go basically about 18 and I fix it later on but uh, in terms of the thickness in terms of the thickness this guy I think this is the other guy yeah right there that should be about 
I'm gonna keep the same, maybe the same thickness, the four millimeters, and that will do. And uh, now the question is, that's kind of a, you see how the propeller is right here with the four and the angle attack very high versus the thirty. Uh, gonna accept the way it is right now, so we're gonna accept that. And let's see, it's still not fully defined because let's see what is missing. This line is not collinear with this line, oh, and then we have to do that. So let's escape here for one second and let's make this line control, hit control, and this line collinear. There we go, and now much better. And now it's fully defined, so we can accept that. So here we are. We have uh, these and these that we need to connect them and for that we're going to use this and it's indicating that it's going to it's taking sketch file already so the next sketch is going to be that sketch and the only problem with that is that uh, you see the way it's connecting is this point and this point uh, that's not good. This point need to be moved so that they are more aligned so the blade uh, start to look better. And that is almost done. Good. Uh, you see how that changed? Because it's important that the zebra line here looks smooth and uh, they don't look like uh, they are being cut off or doing or you're doing something strange I can still do better let's see if I can get it better mm -hmm. all right so that looks good I can still make it this a little bit larger instead of being 18 can make it almost 20 like a an inch or so uh, but then that's something I can do later so let's accept there and that's how the blade start to take shape now the next one is do another ellipse but uh, at the final distance and again uh, let's do here and let's do if you remember here the laugh uh, it's gonna take uh, since I merged this guy to this guy so it's keeping the same body it's one body and then this guy is another body this guy is another body so let's finish this by dropping to uh, adding the other three inches that are missing here so that means that right from the center from the right plane I need to construct another reference the reference plane but this one will go um, here the full six inches so that's six times 2.54 times 10 and on that one I can go accept that and from this last plane from this last plane let's construct uh, a sketch here and that sketch will uh, drop the angle of attack even further and to do so let's get here again the center line there we go and now construct two lines for reference now we're gonna construct this guy and this guy uh, will be about no more than 15 degrees so uh, and now let's put the lips there 
and uh, so and now uh, again put uh, a working line from here from the center of the lips to here and uh, we're gonna we're gonna uh, reduce the size of that ellipse a little bit um, let's see where we are I uh, would we'll say about uh, maybe six inches I mean six millimeter we'll see it's getting smaller but then uh, the thickness I'm gonna drop it to three and that looks uh, that looks okay uh, okay now let's uh, finish this by adjusting the angle of attack to actually uh, it's gonna be this line and this line and that should be convenient let me open this I can see that and that there we go and still too thick I, I will uh, let's make it a little bit longer because uh, the way it is right now let's see what is this that's the length yeah that's the length uh, need to be a little bit longer I don't like the way it is right now um, 10 um, my, looks better so let's accept that and if we define look good so we accept that and here we are and that's the final so it's coming from then we adjust the loft here and the other sketch is going to be this guy again the same problem here something need to be adjusted a little bit this for the guideline yeah let's see that looks better all right let's see again let's see where line looks good Mm, can improve a little bit more let's see now yep let's leave it there and accept that and basically here is our big guy that's a six inches from the root up to here with an angle of attack that start with 45 degrees at the root drop to about 30 degrees here and another uh, from here to here to 15 degrees so that's quite acceptable now the next things that i want to do is i can hide the planes so i don't see them all bothering me here plane two and plane one and here's our propeller so let's give here um, now I still have two bodies so let's see if I when I do the linear pattern circular pattern and the direction definitely is coming from this guy there we go and now uh, I can do instead of fissures let's see bodies and in terms of bodies that would be uh, this guy that's the body that I want to copy so I have uh, let's see what I have it's coming for four body it's only uh, two let's see two is more than enough on this point and there we go let's see let's accept that and um, so here's the guy. 
I can combine them all together. Uh, so we combine them and make a one, only one body out of this. Mm -hmm. Let's combine and let's see where it's combined. Uh, add, we're gonna add everybody here. And uh, city pattern and the love and this guy as well. So I got the three of them. That look good. So we accept that. And there we go. That's our full propeller. It's a two blade propeller and uh, a 12 inch. Now the question is how would be the performance of that propeller? And that's another story. Just to test the performance of that propeller, uh, we would need to create a rotational region for it. And let's see how would that work. And, but that would be when we do flow simulation. So at this point, this first part, we are only doing the propeller. And that's it. Very simple propeller done with ellipse and you can vary the, the angle of attack as you as you wish. That's the idea for testing for doing the flow simulation and see how is the behavior of the propeller. This propeller need to count uh, uh, rotate uh, if I'm looking from the top. Uh, this one let's see. This one will rotate counter need to rotate counterclockwise so it is to be installed in a counterclockwise manner all right so uh, as I was saying this propeller the way it was designed is for uh, counterclockwise it will rotate this way right and uh, depending of the motor that you have the motor combination this propeller uh, the angle of attack need to be switched switched and uh, the way it is right now will not work for a clockwise so it looks more like a pusher I want to be a tractor so if I want this to be a tractor then the angle here need to be rotated so to do that let's go to where I'm doing that that's gonna be a plane one let's modify that plane for a second and, uh, and let's see what we have that in that plane let me check here and uh, let me see something here. Let me actually get out of here for a second. This car changes and exit. Yeah, and let's see where we are. Plane one. All right. So a little bit here, and that will do. So we need to check on this one. Actually, that's the one that we need to be. Uh, we need to change the angle. Right now it's 45, so we need to switch this. So it's easy to come here and set instead of 45, that would be uh, actually 90 plus 45. There we go. The other way around. Right? So that when you turn uh, clockwise, air will, will capture air under the propeller so we accept that and right now that looks good so let's keep going here see it to the end and let's see what's going on uh, so it is twist is so this kind of look this way because this is looking uh, for what it was uh, counterclockwise, I need to make it for a clockwise. So this love here can it be actually that's coming from what plane? Plane two. And what is inside the plane two? Is sketch five. That sketch five need to be modified as well. And uh, so let's edit that 
and the problem is the degrees so it's gonna be um, 180 minus 30 that should do it all right so let's get here so it's gonna be 180 minus 30 and that should be right on uh, if I have any doubt let's check here let's extend this and let's see what is showing between it is fully defined at this point I'm not adding anything I'm just curious you see the 30 degrees that's perfect so I'm going to take that out not, not added anything because that's already defined so we're gonna accept that and now you see <clears throat> that looks better <clears throat> I got uh, this guy and this guy well aligned now <laughs> obviously this gotta be turned the other way around as well to improve this uh, that wind profile uh, so but uh, it doesn't look too much stress. Actually, let's see something here. Let's check on that one. And let's see. How, uh, it took from the bottom to the bottom. And the zebra line, they don't, they don't look bad. get this a little bit higher let's keep it the way it is right now and let's finish the last piece here so that's creating an ice sword right there so that's under this guy and so let's fix that one that's 15 so um, 180 minus 15 and um, so that should do and now we, we finish that and my propellers now should look a lot better there we go now we need to turn clockwise that's a clockwise propeller are ready to go that looks super so let's save this with a new name and uh, we're gonna save this save as uh, I got a propeller which counterclockwise this would be then clockwise clockwise we save We have both of them and one important thing is depending on what motor you are using I mean this blade need to be uh, it, it was set to turn clockwise so that's what this looks like it's gonna be set clockwise so if the blade is turning the propeller is turning this way right as shown uh, kind of a uh, clockwise then uh, the nuts that sit here, you know, fixing the propeller to the motor, uh, need to be counterclockwise, so it will lock itself because the propeller is turning this way, and the uh, nut will turn, need to be counterclockwise. Now, uh, there's a way around that. If you use a lock nut, then uh, it shouldn't be a problem because then the motor and let's say that you're using a clockwise type of, uh, of nut or clockwise uh, motor and have nothing to do with the direction of the propeller remember there, there's no such a thing like a brush uh, a brushless motor spinning uh, only one direction clockwise or counterclockwise a motor will spin according to whatever you set on the speed controller so jumping the cable you can turn counterclockwise or clockwise but now this propeller, the way it mounts uh, in the motor, uh, it will it need to turn counter, 
right? I mean, sorry, clockwise. This propeller will need to turn clockwise. So, uh, if the nut uh, here is also clockwise, you have to be careful because the spinning of it will make the, uh, in this case, the nut kind of get loose. So that's why you need a lock nut. Unless you you start you you are using a counterclockwise nut here, because if as this spin this way, the nut will self tight into it and would not allow the propeller to kind of uh, pull off from the motor. So that's one important thing. Uh, but it had nothing to do with the actually with the with the motor itself. The motor can spin <laughs> either clockwise, counterclockwise, but the design of your propeller, in this case this one is was created to spin uh, clockwise. And uh, so you use a self lock nut it shouldn't be a problem. But uh, you don't have that and you have to use the kind of a cone shaped nut that comes sometime with the motor uh, then that might be an issue because if it's spin clockwise as well you know like a regular nut will turn clockwise to get not get tight here then and this is also spinning clockwise uh, it might get loose and you don't want that uh, particularly in a multi-rotor system uh, let's see anything else let's let's bring the other one around let's see let's open the other so you see the difference between the uh, that's the counterclockwise open we're gonna check on that one and uh, here is the that one is spin this way counterclockwise so uh, this will be okay for uh, a nut that spin clockwise which is Typically, what you get when you don't say anything, it seems like everything is gonna be turning clockwise, you know, for tightening uh, the the bolt here. I mean, sorry, the nut here. But uh, again, you use a lock nut, uh, shouldn't be a problem. But uh, you keep that in mind. Again, if this is spinning the wrong direction, you need to you can switch the jump the speed controller on the motor, and it will start to turn the way you want which in this case has to turn uh, counterclockwise just to get this right just 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 due to the uh, pro, uh, profile of this propeller uh, let me explain this issue with the directional spinning between either the motor or the propeller and it's best explained by uh, using the concept of a quadrocopter where it has, it has uh, four motors and uh, and clearly the legend here said propeller spin direction that's this color like for example let's look into this if the propeller turn counterclockwise looking for above and the nut fasten in this direction meaning clockwise so they are against one or the other so like for example propeller turn this way you want that the nut turn this way so it's tight it tied uh, the propeller properly to the shaft of the motor, electrical motor. So that's the story here. Now check on this one. Uh, if, the, if this propeller needs to turn uh, clockwise, then the nut need to turn counterclockwise. So you are you are getting a counterclockwise uh, motor, and so forth. And this one is the same as this one. So this one, the nut turn clockwise, but the propeller need to turn counterclockwise and and so forth so in other words the stability of your in this case quadrocopter you have to ensure this kind of arrangement so you have a combination of motor style and propeller uh, spinning either in the clockwise fashion or counterclockwise this is propeller spin direction this, this will be clockwise but the nut need to tight counterclockwise at the end right at the end I mean you can get I mean the motor can be all of them clockwise uh, and but you have to be careful with the nut because the nut need to be of the lock type in order to avoid this kind of situation well that's basically it for this all right more than enough have a great day bye